All right, so in this video, we're going to go through how to write a check for items and expenses. I kind of lump them together. In the accounts payable, we kind of talk about them separately in more detail, but um, I just wanted to take you through this real quick. So writing checks. The difference between writing a check and entering a bill is when you enter a bill, right, I put in a bill, I say it's for rent, the offset is accounts payable, right, and it sits in accounts payable until you cut the check and pay that bill or bill payment, as what that's what QuickBooks calls it. Writing a check is for transactions that are not going to flow through accounts payable. So what that means is that it's going to go straight to the checking account. Okay, For cash basis companies, uh, writing checks is fine. Um, even if you are a cash basis company, a lot of times we'll, do, we'll keep your books on a modified accrual so you can keep track of when you owe vendors and from you know and owe vendors for your payments okay so writing checks again in a business a lot of times they'll write checks if they're prepaying for things they'll write checks if they don't have terms with their vendors uh, we'll put checks in for transactions such as wires or ACHs that have happened um, and then also debit card purchases on your that go against your bank account they will be a check transaction type in there um, obviously the ones that go against your credit card are going to be credit card transaction types. So, Okay, so on the right check, and again, I got there right here on the home screen. It would be under banking right checks. Sometimes people look for it under vendors. It's not under vendors. It's under banking right checks. When we write checks, uh, first field that we start on, it's a preference in your checking if you want to start on the vendor or if you want to start on the bank account area. So make sure to check your preferences on that. So I have mine defaulted to start in the pay to the order of. Now when I look at this list here, it kind of keeps me in the vendor area. But notice I can write checks to customers, vendors, right, employees. You can't enter a bill to employees as an example, but you can write checks to them. Okay, so pay to the order of, I'm just going to go ahead and choose a vendor. Notice that if I do have open purchase orders to this vendor, QuickBooks will warn me. So just like it would on a bill, on a uh, check, it has that set up as well. I'm going to go ahead and say no and use tab to go through my fields. So the next field it takes me to is, I'm going to say it's $500, then it takes me down to my address. I can edit the address here, right? This is what's going to print out when I print out my checks out of QuickBooks. Um, and that's what's going to show up in the window. So again, you want to make sure it's not just the address in there, right? Because then it's, you know, when you send it to UPS or, or USPS, then they're going to see 386 Wisconsin Street, but they're not going to know what business it's supposed to go to. So you need to make the first line the business name and then put in the address. All right, I'm going to tab along. I can choose a class. I can put in a memo. There is a preference if you want that memo to print on the pay stub or on the check stub. And then I have two options down below here. So I have my expenses tab. Expenses are going to go straight to a general ledger account, right? AA Tech Consultants, I'm paying them for uh, computer supplies and equipment. The And then if I continue to tab through here, I have the amount, the memo. If I were assigning this cost to a particular customer or job, I could do that here. And then again, the class is there. Uh, if I do assign it to a customer or job and I am going to bill for this, right? I do have the ability to uh, bill for my time and materials, right? Time and expenses. And so if I leave it billable, it billable, it will pop up for me to invoice the customer for this amount. If I just want the expense to go against that customer for job costing purposes, I can uncheck that billable box and just leave the customer name there. If this was for two customers or maybe needed to be split between two different departments, right? Then I can come down here and notice how QuickBooks did the math for me, right? Since I put 500 up top, if I put 200 down here and I say it's for this job and this class, now watch when I tab to the next line. 
QuickBooks does the math for me to bring me to that $500 amount. It says this is how much is left. So I'm going to stick it to there again. Okay, so those are on the expenses tab. You can if you wanted to. So say we have $250 in generic expenses, but then we also have $250 that's pointed towards some kind of item we use. So I'm going to go ahead and put it for construction. That's probably not a good example. Uh, building cost. And I say, you know, if I had a description, any kind of quantity, maybe it was 10 times $25. Again, I can put in a customer and I can make it billable to the customer as needed. Okay, so you can use both the expenses tab and the item or either or. All right, so up top on the checks, we do have previous and next. We have find, we have new, save, delete or void. Watch another video on voiding checks. Uh, create a copy. So if I need to duplicate this for any reason, I can memorize these if it's something that's going to auto charge every month, maybe on my debit card memorize it so you don't have to re-enter it every month. It'll put it in for you automatically. We can print it. So I can print this one, right, one off check if I needed to. I can also mark it to be printed later. Notice when I do that, it takes away the check number because the check number will be added after I print it. Um, also notice my tab never took me through the check number and my date. And again, that's because of that preference that I didn't have it start at the bank account level. So if I had had it start at the bank account, then when I tabbed it would have taken me through number, date, and then down to pay the order of. But again, a lot of times people when they're entering these, they're entering them for the current day so they can skip over those. If you did connect to any bank service, you do have the ability to click pay online. It'll sync to your bank and the bank will cut the checks for you. We can't attach documents in here, so if you have any kind of receipts, we can apply a PO to this transaction, right, or select a PO to pull forward onto this transaction as needed. Uh, you can enter time. So if we're cutting this check and we're paying them based on a time card entry that we have entered for them, we can, uh, you know, enter the time there. Uh, clear splits means it just wants to, so if I had multiple lines here, you don't want it to be split into multiple lines, so you clear that out. Recalculate. If it was, I had $15 down here, so it came up to 375. 250 plus 375 does not equal 500. So instead of trying to figure out the math, I can just hit recalculate. It'll recalculate that amount for me up there. And then of course we have batch transactions, which you can watch in another video. Okay, so that is how to uh, write a check for items and expenses.